Justin Trudeau isn't handling his breakup with Jugmeet Singh very well, and it's starting to show as he's making excuses and telling premiers to get out of the way when it comes to his plans for the rest of Canada. Let's get into it. Oh, yeah. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. If you looked yesterday on the channel, we talked about Justin Trudeau's infamous breakup with Jugmeet Singh. His thruple is no longer happening. Sophie left him, Jugmeet left him, and now he's all on his own. And of course, it couldn't get any better. Now, I've said multiple times before that this is like a hydra with the many heads now starting to eat each other. While Jagmeet Singh didn't flat out break off his coalition, uh, the, the comments that he's made and, and the comments that we're about to see from Justin Trudeau clearly indicate that he'll have no choice but to do so if he has to stand behind his word. Uh, Justin Trudeau knows no bounds when it comes to his hubris, and of course, he will not step down and in fact, doubles down in this statement. Now, I told you guys on our live streams, which by the way, if you haven't joined us for them, you should every Friday here on the channel at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, uh, every Friday for Friday Night Fringe, where we usually talk about these things, but one thing I mentioned was as soon as I heard a statement from Justin Trudeau, of course, I would be bringing that to you guys here on the channel. So let's not waste any more time because it's a little lengthy, but let's get straight <laughs> into it. Um, Justin Trudeau was in, um, I think it's called Vaughan, Ontario, and he was talking about housing, of course. He was talking about all the wonderful things that he's continuing to do for Canadians, despite the fact that he's losing basically all support that he's ever had moving forward with his minority government. Now, he's asked about Alberta's new bill and Danielle Smith pushing back against Justin Trudeau. Again, we had a video on that earlier this week as well. I would definitely recommend going to check out Danielle Smith's statements where she essentially said that Justin Trudeau needs to stay in his lane and stop telling her how to do her job. And that coming forward, any kind of project that is going to come to the province that's going to be given to municipalities must go through and be approved by the province first. Justin Trudeau is not allowed to just simply come to Alberta, offer money to municipalities on a carrot, like a carrot on a stick, and then float away while the premier stands there shaking her head saying, what just happened? We know that Justin Trudeau has made multiple trips out to Alberta and not informed the premier he's here because quite frankly, he can't hold his own against her. She's got bigger stones than he does, apparently. And now we're seeing the question come forward where Justin Trudeau flat out tells premiers to get out of the way which is a very nice rhetoric where we're going to be headed in the future. Again, get your popcorn, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to get great. Let's take a listen to what Captain Sox had to say. More fair for all Hi, the Prime generations. Minister, Globe and Mail. Back to provincial relations. Uh, Alberta has a new bill that seeks to stop your government or federal governments from negotiating directly with municipalities, essentially saying stick to national policy, not in my backyard. And she says it would be inefficient for you to negotiate all these agreements with hundreds of municipalities. Can you respond to her criticisms and why you would still pursue this? It seems like it was only a few months ago uh, that I pointed out quite accurately that the federal government uh, doesn't have a whole lot of direct carriage of uh, housing, that, uh, that it is very much a provincial and municipal responsibility. The federal government has certain responsibilities that we've been stepping up on since 2017, but I pointed out that this is not something the federal government can solve alone. And over the following weeks and months, we heard from a cavalcade of premiers saying, see, the federal government needs to step up more, needs to do more. It's trying to get out of the business of housing. The federal government needs to step up and fix this housing crisis that we've seen across the country. So we are. <laughs> Provinces should be careful what they wish for. They want the federal government to fix this housing crisis? We are. We will. Now, let me be very clear. It'll be much better if the provinces continue to step up with significant ambition. And we've seen a number of provinces do that. When we announced the housing accelerator funding, $4 billion across the country, Quebec said, you know what? We'll actually match the $900 million you're sending to municipalities in Quebec. We'll double it 
and we'll do even more, even faster. So I just want to chime in on something here. Telling provinces they should be careful what they wish for. While Justin Trudeau comes in with his goose-stepping rhetoric, um, keep in mind that the money he's talking about is an accelerator fund for cities to essentially build 15-minute cities. That's why the money was only offered to Edmonton. That's why the money was only offered to Calgary and major cities. Not smaller cities because, well, they don't want to build 15-minute cities there. This is all about major, major cities. It's a carrot on a stick, essentially. And when he talks about asinine things like Quebec, oh, we're going to match it. We've got all this money kicking around. I want to remind everybody that Quebec gets the majority of their money from Alberta in transfer funds to the tune of, I believe it's somewhere around $30 billion a year. So big old talk in Quebec coming in like they're the heroes. Let's, uh, let's continue. BC came forward and said, you know what? There's a BC builds program we've wanted to build around affordable housing. Um, we'll, if you can match the money we're doing, We'll do even more. And we did that. And we created the Canada Builds program. And we're working directly with municipalities that want to be super ambitious. The three mayors that are here today represent municipalities that signed housing accelerator agreements worth in excess of $150 million that's going to create 4,000 units over the coming years uh, in, this, uh, in this region. Again, I'm going to apologize for continuously cutting in, but I don't want to miss the points here. 4,000 units in the coming years across Canada, 30 some odd to 40 million people, roughly. And a majority of those are immigrants that have nowhere to go. People who can't afford to live. If you remember on the channel, we showed a video of Christia Freeland in Victoria talking about some of these units saying that, oh, they're so frugal and they're so affordable. Uh, there were two bedroom apartment condos at roughly 500 square feet. So the size of a suite in a hotel going for over $3,000 a month, which if you work that into the 5% interest that's usually common, uh, that works out to over half a million dollars. Yeah, that's real affordable, Justin. <laughs> real affordable. 4,000 units. Man, you guys are really doing it. Keep in mind that he said that housing wasn't the government's responsibility. And now he's coming in full bore with this, saying that, oh, well, we're coming in to fix it now. We've been told we have to fix it. What the premiers were asking him to fix was the red tape that stops them from moving construction forward, not the government buying up properties to sell it back to Canadians. Huge difference. These are things we are doing concretely where we recognize that Canadians need help and support and investment and don't so much care about, you know, whose responsibility it is first and foremost. They just want it to get done. And that's why we are there to work hand in hand in full respect with those provinces who want to solve the problem and ask those provinces that don't want to solve the problem to just get out of the way while we solve that problem that Canadians are facing. Just get out of the way. Doesn't that sound familiar coming from Justin Trudeau? They just take up space. How do we tolerate them, right? Just get out of my way. Let me do what I want. Oh, King Justin, dictator supreme. Shows here PM Justin Trudeau uh, now sitting down to take questions. And he's asked about his breakup with Jagmeet Singh. His inevitable breakup with Jagmeet Singh. Um, I don't want people saying, wow, you're quoting something that hasn't happened yet. It's coming. Guys, there's no repairing this bridge at this point. It's, it's coming. Here we go. Let's take a listen. The NDP is expressing reservations about the carbon tax. What does it signal that you have lost many premiers and now you may be losing the NDP's support for your plan as well? I feel for the NDP and for Jigmeet. Um, this is a hard moment. There are political headwinds. There's a lot of political pressure. I'm certainly feeling it. Everyone should be feeling it. Uh, by folks out there who are worried about affordability, who are worried uh, about climate change. And I don't know. I, I, my perspective is this is a time to actually do more to fight climate change, not less. 
to do more to put money in people's pockets. And it's not a handful of conservative politicians and premiers that are going to uh, turn me away from continuing the fight against climate change, the fight for a better future, and the fight to put more money in people's pockets. So I don't entirely understand the position of the NDP in pulling back both from affordability measures and uh, from uh, the fight against climate change, but I can assure everyone that this government my government will continue to step up on the fight against climate change, will continue to put more money in families' pockets. As of this coming Monday, the 15th, families right across the country in uh, carbon, federal carbon backstop jurisdictions will be receiving the CCR in their bank accounts, the Canada Carbon Rebate, that will give them more money up front then they will be, on average, paying out with the price on pollution. That's extra money for affordability, for groceries, uh, for costs that families are facing. The Conservatives are telling everyone they will take away those carbon rebate checks and step back in the fight against climate change. It's unfortunate that their arguments seem to be resonating with the NDP. But this government will continue to be steadfast in putting more money in 8 out of 10 Canadians' pockets with the Canada Carbon Rebate, particularly middle-income and low-income families, and continuing to fight against climate change. And on the issue of industrial pricing that the NDP is suggesting, that's a great idea. That's why we have it in place. That's why we're doing that. That's why we're making sure that heavy emitters pay for their pollution as well. But it's also why, recognizing that big companies often pass on costs to citizens, that we will be putting more money in citizens' pockets as we continue to step up in the fight against climate change. So he's basically saying there he's not backing down. Jagmeet Singh has a very important decision to make here. He has come out stating that he doesn't agree with citizens now paying it, that it's big polluters. Uh, Justin Trudeau's word salad is not going to resonate if he sticks to his word, and he's going to have to. If he doesn't at this point, he's going to look like the world's biggest hypocrite, and it's going to cost him not just his job, but possibly his party status. It's important to remember that, that what Jagmeet Singh, he didn't just have some kind of revelation where he woke up and said, oh, I think I'm going to do something to benefit Canadians. Jagmeet Singh, as well as every other politician on this planet, do not care about me. They don't care about you. They care about what's best for them. And, and what he has figured out is that he's essentially destroying and nuking Jack Layton's party into the ground if he continues to prop up Justin Trudeau. It's rats fleeing off of a sinking ship. Uh, Justin Trudeau talking about, well, Pierre wants to get rid of these checks that are coming to people, which, let me remind you, you're only getting if you make less than $50,000 as a household. Let me know on Monday in the chat or in the comments section if you got your rebate. I know we won't be getting ours. Uh, but <laughs> what's funny about the whole thing, what's really funny about the whole thing is that Justin Trudeau acts like, like it's the NDP's fault. Like they just don't get it. They just don't understand what's going on. That if Pierre deletes this, it's going to take money out of Canadians pockets. No, Mr. Trudeau, it's putting money back into Canadians pockets because it's not being passed on to the consumer anymore. Consumers don't have to put it on their food, their gas, their utilities, their ability to live, they, everything they basically do in their day-to-day -day life. I can assure you that any family that does receive this rebate, the only ones that are going to benefit or, or take a loss from that check coming to them multiple times a year are those that basically sit on their behinds and do nothing and don't contribute to society, which are the people that Justin Trudeau wants voting for him anyways. It's the you'll own nothing and be happy. You can depend on the government for everything. But I don't know where it's going to go from here, folks. Again, I think it's going to get nasty. I think it's going to turn into a bloodbath because Jagmeet Singh, after his statement yesterday, has pinned himself into a very very sensitive corner that he's going to have to basically make a decision and run with it. And uh, I, for one, I'm going to take a little bit of pleasure in laughing and enjoying all of the chaos that comes 
<laughs> from his announcement on Friday morning. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Do you think it's going to get nasty? Uh, <laughs> are you going to enjoy it as much as I will? Uh, let me know what you think down below. If it's your first time here, I would encourage everybody to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this content. Make sure to leave a thumbs up and a comment on the way out as YouTube has been massively, massively shadow banning this channel as of late. It's been next to impossible to get videos out there for people to see. So every time you leave a thumbs up and a comment, it helps us get out there in the algorithm. So please make sure to do that as you're heading out the door. Uh, make sure again to join us on our live streams every Friday at 8 p.m. Uh, Central, 6 p.m. Pacific here on the channel for Friday Night Fringe, where we'll talk about things like this as we did this last Friday and other things coming up in the week ahead, as well as some back and forth with the community. I look forward to talking with each and every one of you there, and it's definitely the highlight of my week, and I can't wait to talk to you all this Friday. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you on the next one.